Okay, so let's jump into this installation. So as you can see on week 18 of our Tech Tuesday, we went ahead and ran this one connect cable through the wall using an Arlington LV1. Again, you can use Arlington, Carlon, any real cut in ring, single gang. On this video, we're actually gonna install a Legrand 17 inch in wall enclosure for the Samsung One Connect. That will alleviate the cable in between, obviously. However, now we don't have any power up there. So our goal is gonna use a mid-light power jumper kit. It's a UL listed device that actually routes the cable power up. Uh, keep in mind again, kind of a disclosure, not sure if that's a, a UL listed in your state, your housing authority or inspectors may have something to say about that, but we're gonna go ahead and do it here. And so this video, what I'm gonna do is same thing I did with my last one and a few other ones. I'll go ahead and set this on the tripod and then in between steps, I'll hop up and kind of speak into the mic. That way you get to see the work done real time and then you'll get to see everything done here. I may, uh, just a full disclosure again, may pause it because we actually have a conduit running through here that I'm gonna have to cut out for the One Connect box. So as you can see, we have conduit up there that came down, came down here. This was our old demo room. Now this room is gonna actually be part of our new theater room. So we're kind of wrapping up some of these videos that we've been meaning to do and get this stuff going. So anyway, I'm gonna get this on the uh, tripod and uh, start showing you what we can do. Okay, so got this on the tripod. Apologize for the little pause there. And uh, so I'm gonna jump into this installation. First thing I'm gonna do is kind of decommission some of the work we've previously done and then uh, get started on the rest of this. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just decommissioning some of the week 18 Tech Tuesday work. But what I am gonna do is take the time to uh, use this uh, one connect cable as a pull cord so I don't have to re-pull the power cord up. Now, if you're interested in how to fish that up, again, then you'd be fishing Romex up. That video on week 18 of the Tech Tuesday would cover that. Um, so that's just a couple days ago. You'll be fine on that. Okay, so again, just a quick pull cord through. Now the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the Arlington LV1. I actually didn't realize I had the enclosure there, but all I did on the bottom there was undo the brush plate. And so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the bottom LV1 because that's where our power jumper is gonna go. We're actually gonna do all our work up top here. And then we'll, at the very end, we'll use this blue cord to pull our power up into our one connect box. And we'll be uh, basically ready to go on the frame TV. Okay, again, I'm jumping back in here. So you saw I put about five pieces of tape out and marked the top. So that top piece of blue tape that's actually attached to the wall, that's the top of our Samsung frame TV. And on this scenario, we're just gonna kind of mock it up as a 50 inch. So top, bottom are marked. Got some just kind of quick left and right placeholders of where I think the Samsung frame wings are gonna go. Now what we need to do is actually find our studs left and right. Um, two things here, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's 14 and a half inches between your studs. If you have any oddball framing, that won't work. The one connect enclosure requires 14 and a half inches by about 17 inches tall.
Okay, so what I've done there is marked both sides of the studs. The inside of each piece of tape is 14 and a half. This was framed 16 inch on center. And then next step is we're gonna confirm where our frame mounting brackets are gonna go. So we don't want the one connect enclosure to get away with our mounting. So you're gonna find on the 43s and the 50s, you're gonna have to overlap the mounting brackets on the 55s and up. Generally, they'll get away with that. And it may be the 50s, so we'll find out real time on that. Uh, I don't use the paper template that often, so I'm using a, a device from a company called Install Template Co. And what that does is it's a pre-built three position uh, device. So it's got the Samsung frame wings and a center divider that comes in 50 all the way up to 85. And it takes about 30, saves about 30, 40 minutes off our installs. Okay, so you can see there I've used our device to uh, find where the frame wings are going to go. And unfortunately on this one, if it was a 50 inch, we would be covering up just a small edge of the one connect frame. So I think on this case, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and install that. And then when I actually do the install of the wings from the Samsung Frame TV in a future video, I'll show you both scenarios and how we can actually still mount a 43 and a 50 using the 17 inch one connect. Uh, and then obviously 55 up to 85, there's no issue there. The wings are large enough and go on the outside. Uh, so next step is going to be to get the template out and start working on the uh, one connect enclosure. So a couple quick notes. Uh, one thing that just came apart on this, uh, when you pull this box apart, now that was a new box, it's got the cable guard, it's got your frame, it's got the two inserts for covers. There's three, two, three little bags of screws. That's actually mounting the frame to the back enclosure. And then I'm noticing about half the time on the Legrands, even the Sanus, we're actually not seeing an install template. Now that's pretty easy. We know that it's 14 and a half inches wide. So what we'll do is we'll cut over to our left joist, uh, left stud, excuse me. And then we'll measure back over 14 and a half. So we have two vertical up and right cuts. You'll see that in the video. And then we'll pull our measurements on our height. So pretty, pretty simple still, even without a template and probably a better scenario on this video to do it without a template. So for future reference and on this video, the upper height of this Samsung uh, frame one connect box from Legrand. It is 17 and one eighth inch. I'm going to go ahead and cut my hole at 17 and a quarter inch tall by 14 and a half. So that's going to be our opening. I'll do our standard typical uh, install practice with a plastic bag. I'm going to go ahead and get that cut in. I am going to take that LV1 out and throw it in a bin so we can use it down the road. So again, using our typical plastic bag to keep dust control down. I've also moved some of our uh, hardware out of the way, our power kit and our Legron out of the way just to, again, alleviate dust. I got the moving blanket down. And so what I'm gonna do is cut left to right to get the edge of those studs. And then I'll work my way up and then I'll just take and uh, a level and trace it all out. Okay, so this is the way I like to do it. If I was actually did not have an LV1 already there, I like to kind of do a plus sign with the cuts. The nice thing about that is if you run into any blocking or unexpected things in that wall, you're probably gonna catch them with that plus mark. And I can tell you right now, if you're just doing a plus mark without a hole, 
that's a very easy patch for any tech, anybody to do on site. And then you can hang a picture over it or have a customer paint the wall. So that's the way we do it. And then my next step is, is I actually take a level. Um, and since I'm doing a Samsung frame TV, I'm probably going to have a three foot level with me to get it perfect. So I take my three foot level and I level up and down, do a couple measurements, confirm, and then I cut the final hole out. Okay, so what I've done there is take a two foot level, pencil out my marks. Again, if you had the template, you could use that. I think the template on our last install was actually off a little bit too. It's a little too precise. They should have oversized it. So our next step is gonna be to get the uh, One Connect box completely cut open. And then we're gonna check our wiring. And then the cool thing about that is we're actually gonna utilize that big, huge opening to help pull our power into place as well. Okay, so we've got our hole cut out. It looks like it's gonna fit. We're obviously gonna do a test fit first. Now in this scenario, as I was explaining, there was a piece of conduit there from previous install. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. I'll pause the video for that. And then I'll just conclude the rest of the install on it. But as you can see, it's fairly cut out. You probably see the video, we are doing a little bit of dust, but we do have our drop cloth in the bottom. We got our clear bag. Now, if we were doing this in a higher end home, you know, actually really pretty much any home, we would have been used a larger drop cloth on the bottom and we would use our big drum liner bags, which are considerably wider and catch more dust. So that's our scenario there, just so you guys have some insight on that. So I pulled the tape off. I'm gonna pause the video. As you note, I actually used the Legrand box to put my drywall chunks in too, so that's a nice feature. Okay, so conduits cut out. You probably just see the edge of it in the video. Uh, we actually had that in a network wire running through this wall. Again, it's part of our demo room rebuild, so we're taking advantage of this wall to uh, wrap up some of these instructional videos. And keep in mind, you can still see the bottom of our TV tape. I've kept that there the whole time, so make sure I not have this one connect go below where the frame TV is gonna go. So you can toss out the cable guard. You may or may not use this, depending on what your install is. We usually save these, but we rarely use them. And then you'll see you got knockouts and knockouts. So in this case, we're going to use the bottom knockout here for our uh, power from uh, Midlight. You can use that. Obviously, power can come from any company you want to get from Amazon or wherever. And then these tabs have to be cut out with a razor blade. I'm going to go ahead and try to just do that. But basically, the best way to do these is just to kind of cut through here and cut this out. Okay, so power's cut through. We take our fish cord. So you can see our one connect pops right in there. We've got a little bit larger hole on there, it's up and down, so it fits in there fine. We obviously do our tolerances a little bit tighter on that, so but the frame easily covers it. And then one other thing to quickly note here 
is that uh, we just use some drywall screws to pop these in most of the time. Uh, on the retrofit applications, their screws are almost two inches long, so there's no reason to use screws that long. Okay, so obviously you see it's an easy fit. We've got about a quarter inch gap on the top, a little more than we'd want. Again, I'm doing this on an instructional video. I'm going relatively quick. Uh, I would say on an out in the field or a DIY that's never done this before, just give yourself an hour, two hours of time. And so my next step, I actually go ahead and put the bezel on so that I don't drop any more dust anywhere. Remember the three little bags of screws I talked about? That's where you're gonna use these now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the tripod here and show you those screw holes. So basically you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. These side ones keep this from bowing out. And then another thing to note here is this thing does come with a retrofit wings. So if you can't use the side tabs here, so if you can't use these tabs, it's got wings that come out almost like an install speaker or like the Arlington low voltages. So again, and then this just dust so that'll wipe away. We're just about ready for our power. Okay, so one connect box is installed. We're gonna pull up our power and uh, get the rest of this wrapped up. Okay, so we always like to use gravity on it and then the way I put this tape in is I kind of looped the blue wire, the blue speaker wire over to help because this wall has insulation in it. And then we're going to go ahead and pull this down. Um, so that's going to leave our power outlets, our double gang, or excuse me, our single gang with two outlets up top into our box. And then our power inserter on the bottom. Okay, so power inserters uh, on the power is on the bottom now. And so that will get an IEC power cord that jumps over to that power outlet. That's what makes you as the homeowner be able to install this without a licensed electrician. Now, a licensed electrician could very well cut that Romex and feed that into that box if the code allows. Uh, so you wouldn't have that lower enclosure. However, it would be harder to retrofit up the wall. And so they do make some small one foot jumpers with right angles on both sides. I'll put a link in the description on that. And then our next step is going to be to screw that in, just do a little bit of cleanup, and then we'll work everything up here in the uh, Legrand box. Wanted to show one other thing. So this is an IEC power cord. So with that IEC power cord, make sure you orient your outlet so that, that cord can go down the wall. You don't want it going up and over. That looks stupid. So you'd have it come down even if you had a shorty jumper. Okay, so the bottom outlet's installed, and then again, look at the description or look yourself on Amazon for a small power cord jumper. What I'm going to do is just jump this in and hang it to the side for now so you can see the orientation of the power cord. And then our next step is going to be to use any of the excess wire. We're going to push that down the wall.
Okay, so we got power cord pushed down the wall. The next step here, they don't really give you hardware from either of these companies. So get yourself some little tiny number eight screws or number six screws. And then you can actually mount that box right in there. As an alternative, you can actually use the cover plate and back mount it from underneath. Uh, however, I don't really recommend that unless you have some longer screws and it's not as secure as a fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some screws from our shop and then I'll wrap that install up. So again, just some little tiny, small number six screws. Okay, so now our outlet's installed. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, shut the camera off real quick. I'll wrap up any of my cleanup stuff and I'll just do a final little tour of what we've done and show you a few reasons on uh, why we've done a couple things extra. All right, so you can see, you got our power bridge in. Again, you can wanna do a short cord there to jump through. You may end up having an electrician run off the top there and run from that cord. But again, we're doing power bridge jumper, lots of those on Amazon runs up to this duplex outlet. We talked about getting a little number six screws. We're mounting that right there. The reason we went with the bottom left here, there's a perfect location there for your Samsung One Connect. Fits there absolutely perfect. Use the Velcro, go Velcro there, Velcro there and wrap. That's now your One Connect's connected. You now have ports up here. If you wanna run anything additional up the wall, uh, maybe you have network cables coming down uh, and you can also put some arc devices. So say you want some sort of audio return. You've got this whole bay here now. So that's our install. So these pop on like this. So there's our top one. There's our bottom. There's 100% completed install. So obviously we'd be cleaning up. And again, just a full disclaimer, if we were doing this in a customer's home, probably take us an hour, maybe an hour and a half, we'd be extra careful. We were doing this on a demo room where we have a little more leniency. And I think looking at the camera, this whole install still took less than 30 minutes. I think at a customer's home, you know, or a DIY who's never done it before, you could do this in an hour and a half, two hours. And it uh, looks pretty darn good. Next video is coming up. Samsung frame bracket install using this wall, using the install template. Uh, and then we'll do a couple other videos on some other stuff on this wall. And then it's back to home theater stuff. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.